and welcome everybody to the second video in this War on the Sea Imperial Japanese Navy campaign. In the previous episode we played the first three days of this campaign. We have lost no ships but 32 aircraft and the US Navy has already lost a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, an aircraft carrier and a South Dakota class battleship in addition to 18 aircraft. So what is happening next? I have to replenish my aircraft carry here. I have lost all my strike planes. I am sending my transport group back as well to be disestablished and to get new hitting power. Maybe an aircraft carrier, maybe a battleship. I'll have to see how many points I have left. And in the meantime, my four submarines here will have to do the heavy lifting. But that being said, the enemy should be spawning new task force any moment now. And with nothing else going on, I will cut here and come back when something develops. Interesting development on day five. Enemy troops have landed at Guadalcanal, but they are so few in numbers that we shouldn't have any problem defeating them. I also released the tanker from Task Force 5 and sent it back with supplies and 250 men to the Shortland Islands. And I have just got back the command points for my Akitsuki class destroyer and the Rujo carrier. Hope I'm saying that right. And I should be getting a couple of points more or not for the tanker. So that is, oh, actually, I did get them back. So we can look at a new task force. Japanese, of course. And we are looking at, what does the Yamato cost? 110 points. I might be inclined to it. But I am looking at a Shokaku class carrier and getting an Akitsuki air defense destroyer to accompany it. Swap the positions, done, and come down to here. Do this kind of patrol pattern. We are down to nine command points again. And here comes the Shokaku. No other developments except those. My scouts and my submarines have been essentially bored out of their time. With the exception of the three destroyers in this area, nothing seems to be going on. And somehow troops managed to land on Guadalcanal. That as for an update now. And I will be back shortly. Absolutely zero developments over the last couple of days. We are on day eight of this campaign and we finally detected the three destroyers again. And I am launching valves to take care of that problem. I have also positioned I-17 closer to the New Hebrides, but overall it has been a boring couple of days with no ship sightings and the first one to really pop up again is this destroyer group. There is definitely a cruiser or aircraft group around, but I have not been able to locate them, only the occasional float plane or scout plane coming around and here we are. I've already, I've also sent some men in the Yugumu down here 
and I am going to try and place them here just to find out what is going here on here in Malaita. Now let's go to tactical and take care of those destroyers. Already detected and here we go. What do we have? Okay. 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 So we are going to put our attention on swinging around here. Take them from the front and let's quickly identify these. <clears throat> Single stack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking good. This is a grid lay. So is the second one. And the third, three grid lays in a row. It doesn't really matter which one we are engaging. Looking from our dive bomber down. can see them, I certainly can. My welds are going to swing around any moment. Well, let's swing them around now. And we are going to attack the two platforms In the back here, the rearmost two. Yep, number three. Go for it. sending the first three to attack number the uh, first four to attack the second one uh, what does that look like from our destroyer friends here yards out and here are our planes want to look from this angle Tipping over, first are uh, tipping over at the back and at the front as well. Come on, boys. Yeah, here we come and... Yeah, number three certainly has been one to three bomb pits. 
And we have lost two valves. Heavy damage, heavy flooding. Not bad. And they are both leaving the formation. Down to 14 knots. 20 knots for the rearmost gridlay. Mm, she does not look good. She does not look good. Already deeper in the water in the rear. So maybe her stern is going under in a bit, so we have to wait and see what happens here. But I'm definitely not going to come back for a strafing run, which is not very helpful against American destroyers anyways. Is slowing down. She is definitely slowing down. Down to 12 knots and the seas are rolling over her stern. We might see her go down. And speaking of which, accelerates to 14 knots again. Hmm. Seems to be getting under control. Let's see what the other one is doing. This one has only been hit by one bomb. And she is doing 24 knots. Absolutely not affected whatsoever. circle while is this happy little shippy here still burning internally speed things up a little but it doesn't look like Either of them is going to go down. Oh, a bit of fire again. And here we are. Recovered from the attack. Slight listing. And we are simply going to retreat. Heavy damage, moderate flooding, minor damage, no flooding for other gridley. Well that means we need to send a second strike. Ooh. Come on. Here we go. And we are going to use high explosive bombs. and sending the other group of valves back. Hmm. I am 
am totally perplexed that there's nothing coming out of the new Hebrides right now. Here we go, finally. You are going to see the first submarine attack. And it is I-17. And we are in perfect position. That is unfortunate. Nothing big here. Let's quickly identify those. Single stacker. Could be a grid lay again. No, no. It's only one set of torpedo tubes. Summers. Looks like a Benham. We got a Benham. Sims class. Is that a porter? Porter, yeah, that is a porter class destroyer. Those are not dual purpose. Yeah, we are going to target the porter and then trying to put two more fish in the first one. We are not targeting the banner. We're going to target the porter. 4,000 yards away. changing course. <clears throat> okay, we need to surface, then scope down. 95%, it won't get any better. Fire. for the Benham. Next.
think I fired a little bit late to catch the Benham as well. It's looking good for the Porter though. Looking very good for the Porter. And there she goes. And I missed with the second torpedo. It's definitely not good. And I missed both torpedoes for the Benham. Sea state six, okay. Sea state four and above, it is very, very difficult to accurately hit a destroyer. Heavy damage, heavy flooding. Oh yes, she does not look like a happy ship. That one should be sinking any moment. sitting here until those other two destroyers get their act together. <coughs> Especially not with a distance of about 1500 yards. Definitely not where I would want to be. Porter is doing 12 knots. The Sim is doing 2. Let's be bold here. Let's take a risk. Come up to one to zero feet.
four torpedoes, one degree spread. Coming up, coming up, come on. Underwater. fire. That might just do the trick. If I could hit both, that would be great, but after missing this first one, bomb. And the Sims is definitely gone. Porter still doesn't look any better. Critical, critical, heavy, heavy, yeah. But we need to get the heck out of Dodge. Benham's out for revenge. Hundred and forty seconds until we can leave. Seven torpedoes. One Sims class sunk and a Porter class heavily damaged. Not too bad. Could have been worse. Will be worse if we get hit by the Benham. And I certainly don't want to test my luck.
this water has been deceived by the days. 30 seconds until we can leave the combat area. But the Benham does not turn around. Should I be risking it? No. Thank you so much for the fish. One Sims class at the bottom of the sea. One command point gained. Day 8, 90 command points available. And that is the story for now. Need to find... Need to re-establish contact with those destroyers here again. And conduct my first offensive operation here, taking back my lighter. I do hope those were really cruisers and coming up to this area where I can have a little fun with them. Send another Ooh, that is not looking good. That is not looking good. I do re-embark them. Manage cargo. And move back to here. Reinforce Guadal Canal. Show cargo ready. To launch aircraft. the Congo costs. How much does the Congo cost? The Nagato is 68. Mm. And the Congo is a 64. Should I get myself a Nagato? Should I get myself a Nagato? You know what, let's do this. Nagato, I will get the Mutsu. And obviously, of these costs, Aoba, Miyoko, Yeah, in my previous run through, I was finished by early by mid November, so I couldn't get the Agano class light cruisers. Those light cruisers here, the Tenryu, Sendai, Kuma, they are not up to the task. So 
we are getting a Tarus and Akisuki. And we move down to here and control this area. No luck for I-17, but I might as well replace her after she lost her scout plane. Let's go. And I will cut here again to see what are the developments and get back to you in due course. Oh la la, and here we go. Our zeros have scouted a nine ship convoy and we are going to investigate what that actually is before we start launching planes. Can we see anything? There we are. Destroyer. Ooh, destroyer. Cleveland class. That in New Orleans. That is a New Orleans. That is a Northampton. Yeah. This is a Cleveland and several destroyers. Okay. I'm gonna dive bomb the New Orleans or rather the Northampton. I will dive bomb the Northampton. Treat form up and get the heck out of Dodge. 23 seconds to go. And we are going to launch dive bombers from the Shokaku. Dive bombers with armor piercing bombs. This time we are going to ignore them. We don't want to jeopardize our attack. Now in the first release of this game there was a one hour cooldown between encounters so you couldn't attack in several waves unless there was an hour in between those attacks. But here we go. All our wells Let's get on the right side of this, which is the other side. Form up, turn around like so, or not like so. thousand yards away in a safe distance from these guns and we're gonna quickly identify her as the Northampton that she is. Here we go. 
go Northampton class and we're going to identify the other ones as well. That should be a New Orleans and indeed it is a New Orleans. And this one is a Cleveland class light cruiser. up here, bringing our valves around, and we're gonna go slightly in front of her, hopefully. On second thought, let's start our bombing run from here and go ahead like this. Here we go. And we are already overhead of our valves okay, and opening up Ooh, yes. and here they come come on boys let it rain boy numerous bomb pits one two three valves four valves lost But this Northampton is not looking good. Critical damage, moderate flooding. Oh, well, I guess it looked worse than it actually was. Although she is burning and slowing down. 11 knots. some sort of luck here. We can actually sink her with this one attack. Four valves is a price I would happily pay for a heavy cruiser. Particularly, we can come back 6.35 in the morning Definitely room for two more strikes. And she's slowing down further, eight knots. Critical damage, heavy flooding. Looks like she might be a goner. Fires keep coming up. I say she's a goner.
And although she keeps slowing down, it's a very stubborn ship. Critical damage, heavy flooding. But she refuses to go under. Prime target for a nighttime submarine attack. If I only had a submarine available. of charring fires raging on board but still she does not go down easily although she is lower in the water as well I still have a feeling she might go down We have it. One Northampton sunk. Nine thousand and fifty tons. Three command points for us. So next we are going to go after the New Orleans. Launching. another flight of valves as soon as we can here we are 10 valves high explosive bombs no we want armor piercing bombs Is what we want to do and we want those bells to return home <clears throat> incredibly good start for us it is now day eight and we have already sunk a large number of enemy ships And likely going to add a couple more in a bit. Form up. So, what are we looking at? No, 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 no. And obviously, our main targets are right in the middle. I'm going after this one. I'm going after the Cleveland class instead.
to Vic Formation this time and go for it, boys. We want to attack number four. Vic Formation. attacking with three different angles and they already throw some hate down the range going after our poor valves that's a lot a lot of firepower moment of truth valves coming down Give me something. Nice. Round two. Getting better and better. Come on. Oh, yes. And she is immediately cutting speed. 10 knots and falling. Ah, spoke too soon. She's managing to hold 10 knots for now. Report heavy damage, heavy flooding. Three valves lost. And slowing down further. Come on. Give me some nice secondaries. Starting to list with fires on board. Still heavy, heavy. And let's hope for some more secondaries. And if not, that's also fine. And there we are, the Cleveland class is sinking, we can retreat, that's another two command points gained, and I think that is also the perfect time for setting up 
our final strike for this video. This time with Kate Torpedo Bombers. Recalling our melts. And instead of that cruiser group, we are having another encounter with I-17. What are we looking at this time? Oh, another carrier and already changing course. Firing at me, although they can't see me. Another Cleveland. Another Northampton. Atlanta. And yet another Northampton. Unfortunately, they are behind me. No way I'm going to catch up with that. Very, very unfortunate. And I'm just gonna fire a six torpedo spread manually right in the thicket of it. Let's see what we're getting. And if we ain't getting any, at least we scared. Would have been too good to eliminate all fleet carriers in just one day or in just two episodes of this series. Might not be a very long series if that continues. Eating things. 
things up. Unfortunately, have been more of a scaring off than an actual attack. And the carrier is gone far beyond. the eyes can see. get up and have a go at number three. a very lonely Pensacola. We have anything in our tubes. Two are ready. And you know what? We're just gonna try. Fire. We may not be lucky, but at least We are trying our best. Hmm. Should be somewhere here the torpedoes. No, somewhere here. Up, oh, I think I can see them. This or this area. Those are our torpedoes. Down to two hundred and ten feet. Pensacola is probably visually the heavy cruiser design I like the most. 
out of all the American heavy cruisers. It's also a very interesting design. You can see that they have the triple turrets above the twin turrets. And that is because those were the first heavy cruisers being built after World War I to the 10,000 tons washing and displacement standard. And the way the Americans achieved that is that the width of the ship, the beam, narrowed so dramatically at the front and at the stern that they couldn't fit a magazine large enough in that particular location where the twin turret is. So they couldn't put the heavier triple turrets there and had the twin turret super firing, but had to do it the other way around. And I think we gonna miss. Doesn't look like a successful attack. But okay, we gave it a good old fashioned try. And two destroyers are coming right our way start retreating. It's definitely not our day today. torpedo hits. I honestly didn't think we would be making that attack. <laughs> now if we can at least wound her and send her home, that would Good enough for me today. With 10 seconds left on the clock, heavy damage, heavy flooding, but I don't think she's gonna go under. And we have two destroyers nearby, so we are going to take the exit stage left. And I will see you in the next video.